everyone and welcome to biological tests. The first thing we will always do, even during exams, is to prepare a water bath. Water takes really long to boil, especially in an air-conditioned environment. So uh, make sure to do that first. Now, while it's boiling, we'll be moving on to Burette's test. We're going to add 2 cm cube of sample and then add 2 cm cube of Burette solution into the test tube. And when that's done, that will give you a purple solution. Now, the next test we're going to do is emulsion test, which tests for lipid. Now, lipid is soluble in ethanol, but not distilled water. So, in emulsion test, we take 2 cm cube of sample, we add 1 cm cube of ethanol to it, and then we add 1 cm cube of distilled water. Initially, those layers will not mix, but after you put a rubber stopper on the test tube and give it a little swirl, um, vigorously actually you end up with a wonderful white cloudy emulsion the next test we'll be doing is iodine test for starch this is the easiest test ever add two drops of sample to two drops of iodine solution and your results will be a dark blue solution now, the next part is the tricky part because we are going to be going into Benedict's test for reducing sugar. But here's the catch. We want to multitask. We want to prepare test tubes ahead of time for heating. And we want to do not only reducing sugar tests, but also start with the non-reducing sugar test. So we're going to prepare three different test tubes. Number one, we'll be adding 2 cm cube of Benedict solution to 2 cm cube of reducing sugar. Number two, we'll be adding 2 cm cube of Benedict solution to 2 cm cube of non-reducing sugar so this is without acid hydrolysis so we would expect a negative results for the second test tube now the third test tube would be the acid hydrolysis tube this is before the non-reducing sugar test for this we will add 1 cm cube of hydrochloric acid to 2 cm cube of non-reducing sugar now we can take these three different test tubes and put it into the water bath. Make sure it's between 85 and 100 degrees Celsius. For the first two test tubes, we can heat it for two minutes. But for the acid hydrolysis test tube, we're going to remove it after one minute. You can notice the color change already in the reducing sugar test tube from blue to brick red, whereas the non-reducing sugar has remained a blue solution. Now we're gonna continue with our non-reducing sugar test. We did acid hydrolysis already, we heated it already. Now we're gonna neutralize it using one cm cube of NaOH sodium hydroxide and then add two cm cube of the solution. And then we're gonna heat it again for two minutes to complete the Benedict's test. Now you will see that the solution in the test tube go from blue to a brick red. This is because after acid hydrolysis, the non-reducing sugar has been broken down into monosaccharides and all monosaccharides are considered reducing sugar and therefore will test positive with Benedict's test. And with that, we are done with all our biological tests. Now, when you record results, make sure you record the final color and record whether it's a solution or precipitate or emulsion that formed. Alright, so just now we were testing non-solutions. Now we'll be testing solutions that are unknown to us, namely X, Y, and Z. I've prepared six test tubes here, and since the water is boiling from just now, we're going to start with our benedicts and non-reducing sugar tests. So in the first three test tubes, they will X and Y and Z. I place 2 cm cube of the sample and 2 cm cube of benedict solution for benedict's test. And in the next three test tubes, we have the acid hydrolysis going on. So I added 2 cm cube of sample and then added 1 cm cube of hydrochloric acid to each test tube. This is multitasking to make sure you can complete the experiment in time. Then we take six of those test tubes and put them all into the water bath at 85 to 100 degrees. Now for the acid hydrolysis one, we're going to remove it after one minute, but for the Benedict's test, test tubes, we're going to leave it in there for two minutes. 
even before two minutes is up, we can see that X and Z are both changing color from blue to brick red precipitate, whereas Y is remaining as a blue solution. Now that we're done with the next test, let's continue with our non-reducing sugar test. We have finished acid hydrolysis and heating it. Now we're going to neutralize it using 1 cm cube of sodium hydroxide and add an equal volume of the next solution. This is 4 cm cube. Now this is because we want the ratio of the sample to the solution to be 1 to 1 ratio so that we can directly compare the color intensity between the reducing sugar and the non-reducing sugar test. Then we're going to complete the Benedict test by heating the test tubes for 2 minutes of course. Do not switch the Bunsen burner off throughout until the test is complete. After completing both reducing sugar and non-reducing sugar tests, this is our results. Now we can move on to our next test, which is Birette's test for protein. We're going to add 2 cm cube of the sample to 2 cm cube of Birette's solution. Repeat for onion solution X, Y, and Z. These are our results, only X turned purple. Next up, we have the emulsion test for lipid. We'll take 2 cm cube of the sample and then add 1 cm cube of ethanol and then 1 cm cube of distilled water and then shake the test tube vigorously. The results showed that all solutions remain colorless. Last but not least, we did the iodine test for starch, which is the easiest test ever. Two drops of the sample to two drops of iodine solution. We did this for unknown solutions X, Y, and Z. Unknown solution X and Y remain yellow, whereas Z turned dark blue. Finally, we can take all our results and tabulate them in this table. Solution X has tested positive for Burette's test, which shows that it has protein. And it also tested positive for Benedict's test, which shows that it has reducing sugar. When a solution has reducing sugar, this would show up as well in the non-reducing sugar test, which is hydrolysis and Benedict's test. The color intensity of Benedict's solution after hydrolysis did not increase as well, showing that the reducing sugar concentration stayed the same in Benedict's test as well as the non-reducing sugar test. For solution Y, it tested negative for every test except hydrolysis and Benedict's test, which is the non-reducing sugar test. This shows that it definitely has non-reducing sugar. Solution Z, however, is the most interesting of the three solutions. This is because it tested positive for starch, as shown in the iodine test that turned dark blue. Now, it also tested positive for reducing sugar because the Benedict's test showed a green precipitate. Now, we can see the effects of starch and reducing sugar on the non-reducing sugar test because the non-reducing sugar test showed a higher color intensity than Benedict's test, which is without acid hydrolysis. This shows that the concentration of reducing sugar has increased due to acid hydrolysis. Starch may have broken down into its alpha glucose anonymous during acid hydrolysis, therefore increasing the existing reducing sugar concentration and therefore increasing the color intensity of the Benedict solution. Therefore, in conclusion, solution X contains protein and reducing sugar, solution Y contains non-reducing sugar, and solution Z contains starch and reducing sugar. While you look at me, clean up the lab, 
just a few reminders before we end. Number one, in this kinds of experiments, it's very important to avoid contamination. So make sure you're using a clean syringe in order to pick up a solution and use a designated syringe for that designated solution as much as you possibly possibly can. Number two, multitasking is very important. So always prepare your water bath first and then while waiting for the water to boil, please do other tests. Prepare for the tests that need to be heated. Um, write your report in a neat manner. Time is of the essence when it comes to lab exams. With that, all the best guys and I'll see you next video.